Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Before we get to anything else, we do have to tell you news that just came into the newsroom. The 2021 King William Fair Parade has been canceled. It's not going to take place this year because of this pandemic. Well, Fiesta officials say the next King William Fair will take place on Saturday, April 9th in 2022. We will keep you informed with the latest news from Fiesta as we continue to get those developments throughout the week. Good Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. Good morning. And you know who keeps us informed in terms of winter? Who, Max? Punxsutawney Phil. Punxsut good old Punxsutawney. And, and he, at 6.30 this morning, I know they mm -hmm. had a virtual uh, event where he, Groundhog Day ceremony that takes a place right, in so Punxsutawney, he, Pennsylvania. He emerged from his burrow on the snowy Tuesday morning. It is real snowy over there, as you can see. He is adorable. Look at him. And so, He's so fat. <laughs> <laughs> members of Phil's inner circle. That's his inner circle. They woke up the furry critter 725 a.m. at Gobbler's Knob in Punxsutawney to see if he would see his shadow or not. We're bringing in Justin Horn for this one. So, Justin, Justin I understand <laughs> you were pretty upset about this because apparently he saw his shadow, which means six more weeks of winter. But you are saying there's no way he could have seen a shadow. Well, I'm just saying you look at the video there. It's snowing. It's cloudy. I'm I'm kind of curious as to how he saw his shadow. How does that work? Does he live in that little stump, like for real? Uh, that I don't know. Because that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's you, you got to you got to be concerned for him, though. I mean, he if he hasn't been out in a year, he's coming out in 2021. He's got to be like, man, what happened? What happened over the last? Go year? back inside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of different facets to this, but first off, credit to all the people around him because that is quite a wardrobe they got going on. Well, it's, it's cold, and they're sticking to tradition. I know the tradition was started by Germans back in the early 1800s mm -hmm. um, who brought that tradition to America. But, you know, we were talking about his accuracy, and 104 times Punxsahani Phil has seen its shadow signaling six more weeks of winter. Only 20 times Ooh. has he not seen his shadow okay. signaling in early spring. Solid 8, 80 to 20 ratio going on there. So how accurate is he? Um, anywhere between 40 and 50%. Okay. All right. So it's like a flip of a coin. Justin, mm -hmm. thoughts on his accuracy? Yeah. Well, actually, we're, we're going to show his accuracy here in a second. And it, it, you're right. It's not great. I mean, Ooh. <laughs> we do know that Justin, not the biggest fan of Puxatani <laughs> Phil. I love Puxatani Phil. All right. Let's take a look at today's <laughs> 9 to 9. <laughs> Investigators are recommending the officer who shot and killed a rioter at the U.S. Capitol should not be charged. The shooting is still under investigation, but Justice Department officials could make a final decision about possible charges in the coming days. Newly elected Georgia Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is facing growing criticism even from within the Republican Party. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says her views are, quote, a cancer for the Republican Party, end quote. Nearly 100 House members have signed a resolution to strip Greene of committee assignments. President Joe Biden met with Republicans and says he is unwilling to settle on an insufficient coronavirus aid package. This comes after Republicans pitched their slimmed down $618 billion proposal, just a fraction of the $1.9 trillion proposal that President Biden is now seeking. The Congressional Budget Office says U.S. jobs won't return to their pre-pandemic levels until 2024. However, Moody's Analytics forecasts President Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus could help speed up the economic recovery. This morning, a state of emergency across much of the Northeast. Some areas receiving up to three feet of snow and may see even more before it's all over later today. According to LendingTree, 96% of Americans hold on to at least one false belief about finances. The financial services marketplace says more than a quarter of those 40 and younger don't think they need to be saving for retirement. And more than one third say they know more about money than their parents do. Apple's newest feature allows Apple Watch owners to unlock their phones while wearing a mask. You must be wearing an Apple Watch for it to work. Nike is out with their new hands-free slip-on sneakers. A hinge on the heel lets you slip them on and off without effort. They're seen as Nike's move into the comfort shoes market, which has been booming during the pandemic. 
Krispy Kreme has unveiled four new donuts to celebrate Valentine's Day. You can buy a dozen in the chain's new Dough Notes box, which is designed to look like a postmarked letter. And that's today's 9 at 9. All right. So I think we have breaking news coming to the newsroom, but there we go right now. We are still waiting for the latest information, but right now, this is what we do know. We know multiple FBI agents have been shot in Florida while serving a warrant in a child exploitation case. Yeah, that's right. It's unclear the number of agents that have been injured, including with possible life-threatening injuries. Now, Sun Sunrise Police have said that there was a heavy police presence in that area. The scene was safe as of 9.04 a.m., according to police, who are still who st still ask people to remain in their homes during this open, ongoing investigation. Again, we will bring you the latest as we follow this story closely. And, of course, KSAT.com will also have those updates. Yeah, I just got the push notification from KSAT.com. All right, well, back here at home, 49 degrees out there. A little chilly right now, but gorgeous out there. Yeah, yesterday was so nice. Today is going to be equally as nice. We really got a great week ahead when it comes to the forecast. Maybe a little bit cooler on Friday. We just talked about Pakistani Phil. There's uh, our version of the ground. Dog. Not as cute as the actual one, if you ask me. Uh, but here's some of the stats. 104 more winters. That's what he's predicted. In about 20 early springs, he's about 50% accurate. Maybe a little bit less than that, uh, but again, he is predicting more winter this year. So there's your uh, forecast from Pakistani Field, even though it was cloudy and snowing there this morning. Where he was, he still saw his shadow. Well, let's take a look at the numbers here locally. 44 in Holotus, 49 at the airport, 39 Boulevardy, 42 Canyon Lake, 40, uh, 36 in Comfort, 39 in Bandera. So yes, we are off to a chilly start. But we make it into the upper 60s this afternoon, 68 degrees. Notice the southerly wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. That starts the process of bringing in some humidity. We'll start to feel it a little bit more next couple of days. Maybe some patchy morning fog involved there. We'll talk more about that forecast and a couple of fronts headed our way coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. What you're looking at right now, I-35 and Ben Zingelman. It looks like there's a car, a vehicle on the side of the road. Doesn't look like there's any emergency responders near there. But if anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. None of the top stories we are following this morning. Firefighters having to overcome a handful of challenges while trying to put out a house fire early this morning. Well, crews tell us a dead hydrant and a faulty line were just a few of the things they faced this morning on the south side at that fire. It happened around 1.30 in the morning in the 700 block of West Harlan Avenue. Crews say when they arrived, they found flames showing on the left side of the home and in the attic. Firefighters say the family of six did make it out safely. They're now going to be staying with relatives. Crews were finally able to put out the flames, but investigators still trying to figure out what exactly started this all. In San Antonio, police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding the person responsible for an aggravated robbery. So all of this actually happened back on December 15th, around 4 p.m., the 7300 block of New Laredo Highway. Take a look at your screen. See if you recognize this man. Police say that he entered the Triple E corner store, showed the victim a weapon, and demanded the vehicle. The victim complied with the demands, and police say the suspect drove off in the victim's car. So just go ahead and take a look at that number on your screen. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, you're asked to call that number. Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. And turning now to the COVID-19 pandemic, if you are scheduled to receive your second COVID-19 vaccine dose at the Alamo Dome today, tomorrow, or Thursday, your appointment has been rescheduled. Bear County health officials say a shipment of vaccines from the state has been delayed. Today's appointments are going to be rescheduled to February 16th. Tomorrow's rescheduled for the 17th and Thursday on the 18th. Metro Health tells us people should not be worried about the time between doses, saying CDC guidelines say the second dose just needs to be scheduled within six weeks. If you had an appointment that is being rescheduled, health officials say they have sent you an email or called you with more detailed information. All right, taking a look at morning headlines, fires out of control in Australia, homes going up in flames. And fans with goats honoring who they think is the goat. David Sears is here to explain. Good morning, David. Well, yeah, we'll have to explain that here for that's you. That's a lot. Because that's a lot of goats. Yeah. And you know, there are goats in Texas. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll get to it in just a second. First, let's start in Australia. Saw this last year and it's happening again. That is a house on fire wildfire burning out of control down under happening in the northwest part of the country. It is burning near the city of Perth. The fire already consumed about 30 homes. 
It covers about 17,000 acres, a perimeter about 37 miles. Some of the residents in this region were told it was too late to evacuate. People in other areas were able to get out. So far, only one firefighter has been treated for smoke inhalation. Other than that, no injuries. There are about 250 firefighters battling the blaze. The cause unknown. Last year, it was the southeast coast of Australia that was devastated by wildfires. All right, never a good sign when the truck putting down salt on the road to keep cars from sliding off the road slides off the road. This happening in Pittsburgh. The driver putting down salt, headed down a hill, and then couldn't stop until he went off the road over a little wall into someone's yard. The driver okay, but they will have to deal with the ice some other way. Not going to be easy to get that salt truck back on the road either. All right, this one will tug at your heartstrings. Meet Emma, a rescue Dalmatian, but this is not one of the usual type of rescues that you would see here in San Antonio where a dog just injured or abandoned. Emma is actually from China. She arrived in the States after she was saved from the meat trade in China. She has several injuries, no front legs, as you can see, missing parts of her paws. She has cuts on her tail and the tips of her ears. Emma's recovering thanks to swimming and massage therapy. Marcia Ratcliffe had an older Dalmatian that passed away and found Emma through a Dalmatian rescue site in South Florida and just couldn't pass up the opportunity to help a dog in need and promote the rescue of dogs from overseas. We just try to help educate people and we're just advocating for, you know, the dogs that are still over in China and in, in Korea and even places like Egypt that these dogs really don't have a place there in that society. And if we can get them here, they can get adopted and they can have, um, you know, nice, happy lives. The travel and rehab costs paid for by the rescuing organization and Misha emphasized there are plenty of dogs with special needs that could use a forever home. All right, finally, we'll take it to Kansas City. Those are Chiefs fans, and yes, they're in line to hold a GOAT. For you occasional sports fans, maybe you just watch the Super Bowl just for the fun of it because that's what you do on that Sunday. You're going to hear the word GOAT a lot as we get ready for the big game this weekend. That stands for greatest of all time. The Bucks quarterback Tom Brady called a GOAT. Unless you're a Kansas City fan, they consider Patrick Mahomes the GOAT, and they decided to have some fun with it. They put this event together at the train stop, which is the Union Station, like a historical place there in Kansas City. They hosted thousands of fans dressed up in their Kansas City gear to get a picture with a real live goat. Hmm. So there you go. That's what you do when you can't have the same parties you've been having in the past. That's fair. You turn to goat. So, David, who is your quarterback goat? Yeah. Well, I, you, I mean, Tom Brady has won a few Super Bowls. It's true. So, but, you know, Patrick Mahomes is, is, is the guy. Pretty good. So, All right. You're saying he's the guy. Texas Tech, man. Oh, or the sure. GOAT. All right. We'll see where he can go from here. He's got one. I need about six or seven more. Yeah. We good. He's on the right track. Yeah. I would say so. Thanks, David. Time now, 9, 10, 50 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, a principal took an initiative to help some of his students who are in need. Still ahead, the difference he's made in the students' lives. Plus, the stock market gearing up for what could be another week of rocky trading. Not so far today. We're going to show you the stocks in just a bit. But still ahead on GMSA at 9, what you need to know about the so-called Reddit rebellion. And Texas secession bill has been formally filed in the state legislature, but legally Texas can't secede from the U.S. RJ Marcus joins us next to explain the details. And this is what we were alluding to, the Dow up 465 points. Quite a pop this morning. If anything does change, we'll keep you posted. Good morning, welcome back and happy Tuesday. Now to a story that continues to gain traction. Can Texas legally secede from the union and get independence? RJ Marquez joins us live in the studio to break down what's taking place in the state capitol. Good morning, RJ. Yeah, good morning, guys. This is a question that seems to come up often, especially when there is a Democratic administration at the White House, and that is exactly what we have. So here is exactly what is going on. So this past Friday, Kyle Biederman, the Republican state representative out of Fredericksburg, formally filed a proposed legislation which would give Texans a chance to explore opting out of the union. Biederman began talking about this potential Texit, as he's calling it, back in early December. He said it's his response to a federal government that is, quote, out of control and does not represent the values of Texans. 
Biederman said the proposed bill would not allow for immediate independence from the United States, but instead lead to the creation of a committee that would develop a plan for secession. He also said it's now time that the people of Texas are allowed the right to decide their own future. Biederman said a petition he created in support of the bill has received more than 12,000 signatures as of late last week. All right, so here's really the bottom line, though. Uh, the bill doesn't appear to have any chance to pass, and it could also be illegal. And this dates back to the Civil War era when the precedent was set back then that states could not legally secede and the federal government had the final say in these types of matters. The, U the U.S. Supreme Court also declared that secession was not legal during that time period as well, even when Texas was part of the Confederacy. So this has been going on for years. Now, some people in favor of this move have pointed to Britain's vote in 2016 to leave the European Union as an example. That was called Brexit. But it's important to note that the European Union is a loose association of states with pre-existing protocols for a nation to exit. The U.S. Constitution contains procedures for admitting new states into the nation, but none for a state to leave. So yes, the myth is definitely out there that Texas can easily secede, but it's not really possible. Our state has a history of independence and was its own nation actually for nine years after it declared independence from Mexico all the way back in 1836. If you want to take a look at our state's rich history when it comes to this um, debate and about other questions you might have about this uh, this sort of argument that's taking place right now, all you got to do is head over to KSAT.com. Max, Sarah? All right, Not to mention you. all the federal funds, too, right? We're going to leave that one alone. Okay, <laughs> 917, 52 degrees out. 52, already saw it jump up three degrees just yesterday. Mm -hmm. Top tier day, gorgeous out there. We're going to see it again? Yeah, it's, it's basically going to be a repeat. We'll get temperatures back in the 60s this afternoon. It was, it was a nice start, although a little bit cold. We've heard a lot of people talking about the chilly numbers this morning. We did get down into the 30s to start. Take a look at this time lapse from this morning. Beautiful start. You can see some of those. Mid high level clouds working through, but we're not going to see much of those today. So a lot of sun and temperatures will climb pretty quickly as a result. 49 degrees right now. North northwesterly winds at about three miles per hour. Look for those winds to switch around to the south this afternoon. That will make a difference when it comes to the dew point. Not so much today, but tomorrow and Thursday we'll start to see these dew points really climb. 40 right now in Boulevardi, 44 Canyon Lake, 51 in New Braunfels, 38 Comfort, 42 in Bandera. Everybody has turned a corner and is starting to warm up. 42 in Gonzales, 43 in Kennedy. And looking at the dew point forecast, we will get that climb. Mainly tomorrow, you'll see the dew points jump into the 50s and uh, even mid 50s by Thursday. I think that leads to some morning fog. It'll be patchy, won't last very long, but it will be there, I think, next couple of days. And then a front comes through, dew point falls off the cliff. We're down in the 20s on Friday. That'll be our cooler day. We climb a little bit on Saturday and then we get another front. So these series of fronts uh, looking to head our way Thursday into Friday. And it really keeps rain out of the picture because uh, these are just coming too quickly. We're not getting good moisture return and we just don't have the energy there. So unfortunately, rain stays out of the picture in the seven day forecast. Visible satellite picture, you see some of those clouds that we saw there on the time lapse working through the northern part of the viewing area. But uh, most of San Antonio looking at sunny skies at the moment. We'll zoom out some. Most of Texas is still pretty quiet. We're underneath sort of a ridge of high pressure, and that's uh, keeping most everything quiet across the southern tier of states. It's up north, across the northeast, where they're really getting slammed with that snow. Uh, of course, yesterday got some big time snow totals up there. Huge issues, a lot of travel issues, and still some light snow falling. But look at the totals from yesterday. And these numbers are probably a little bit low because it did snow a little bit overnight and through this morning. But uh, 22 inches in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, places like New York City got close to a foot, if not a little bit more. Scranton, 13.5. Uh, big totals up there across parts of Massachusetts as well. So this was sort of a record storm. It is uh, starting to move away. And they'll get the chance to clear out a little bit, although it'll take some time to get rid of all that snow. Forecast for us, uh, just a few clouds here and there next few days. Uh, again, we may see some fog Thursday morning, especially some patchy fog. Here comes our front. This is Thursday, 5 o'clock. Out ahead of it, very warm. I think we get temperatures near 80 Thursday afternoon for a large portion of the viewing area. Front comes through, no rain with this front. It's all going to be off to our east and then cooler on Friday. And again, we'll get some cool temperatures over the weekend, too, with another front on Saturday. So 68 degrees today, southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. 
73 tomorrow, 80 on Thursday, morning clouds, maybe uh, some morning fog, and then 65 Friday, that's our cooler temperature, 70 on Saturday, and then cooling down again Sunday with a high of 59. But if we don't get some rain in here soon, guys, it is going to be a problem, especially if we get some gusty winds with these fronts. So just heads up there. All right. See, if we get six more weeks of winter, I don't mind 65 and sunny. We have a great winter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. A South Carolina principal going above and beyond the extra mile to help his students and their families. How he's making it all possible next. Before we head to break, we want to take a live look in South Florida near Fort Lauderdale. FBI agents were shot while they were serving a warrant. Right now, it's not clear how many agents were injured or the extent of their injuries. We're working to get more information. We'll bring you the latest as it becomes available. The shooting happened just after 6 this morning. Welcome back in your good news. If you're a fan of Girl Scout cookies right here, you know this year has been different than years past. Some young girls in Colorado are working around the challenges of the pandemic. 11 year old Haley and eight year old Peyton Pearson say selling Girl Scout cookies isn't new to them, but finding new ways to sell them. Well, it's been challenging in a normal year. They'd be outside a grocery store or going door to door because of the pandemic. They're outside their grandma's salon alongside their dancing dad. Way to go, dad. He's made the biggest impact. He's actually been known around here as the dancing dad with them, and people kind of seek him out for it, and he'll stand out there and he'll dance. So where they can sell isn't the only change this year. Another big change, the goal for cookie sales. Last year, the Pearson sisters sold more than 2,000 cookie boxes each, but this year, the goal much smaller, just 400 boxes apiece. And despite their dislike for their smaller goal, their mom says they're just happy to get the chance to simply sell and be joined by their dancing dad. Oh, I love the dancing dad part. All right, on to the next great story of the morning. Usually when someone gets a second job, it is to pay their own bills. But Henry Darby, a principal in South Carolina, says he took on a part-time job just to help some of his students. Three times a week from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., Darby stocks shelves at Walmart and now donates his Walmart paychecks to his students and their families. His decision to stand and deliver has led to close to $100,000 in donations from all over the country. I would be doing a disservice to Walmart if I were to quit now because Walmart actually gave me an opportunity to work that I may help my students. And now that we have dollars, I just wouldn't want to take the money and run. Uh, morally and ethically speaking, it would not be the right thing to do. Such an amazing story. Darby's students thanked him for what he continues to do for their community, and they want to thank him and know that they appreciate his kindness. Educators are the best. So powerful. All right, 927, 53 degrees out. Still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Things are heating up on Wall Street. The three things you should know about the so-called Reddit rebellion involving GameStop, GameStop stock. That's after the break. Plus, six inches of snow for one college campus means war. Look at that. We're going to show you what students did to take advantage of the winter weather. And the Spurs weren't able to bring home a win against Ooh. the Memphis Grizzlies. After the break, our favorite David and RJ are back with a recap in today's Spurs chat. Welcome back. It's 930. It's Groundhog Day. Hopefully it's not going to be a Groundhog repeat for the Spurs. It was a rough night for the Spurs as they beat got beat down by the Memphis Grizzlies for the second game in a row. It was a really harsh intro. David and RJ, they're back, hopefully giving us some answers. What happened last Ooh. night, guys? It was pretty much Groundhog Day well, when they skittered. They say, played Memphis the twice and they look like, <laughs> wow, like we've yeah. been through this before. Um, at, last night was essentially a carbon copy of yeah. what happened Saturday. I don't know what is going on when the Spurs take on this Memphis team. It seems to be kind of their, uh, their kryptonite for whatever San Antonio is trying to do. And uh, last a, night, I mean, Memphis just, just took it to them again. A depleted Memphis team, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, the problem is, well, I don't know what the problem is anymore. <laughs> here's, here's, what I, here's what I think the problem is. They don't make shots and they don't play defense. That, 
would be a bad recipe, yes, <laughs> for any, uh, at for one, any basketball yeah, team. Yeah, they give up too many easy baskets. At one point, San Antonio gave up 44 points in the paint, and they only had 16 points in the paint. And last night, the final was where I got it written down. They gave up 62 wow. points in the paint, and they only scored 32 points in the paint. So the paint, see that? that where all that black is right there? Yeah. Isn't that the paint? Yeah, that would that's be the pretty, paint. That's and pretty that's close to the basket. And if you're shooting jump shots and missing, and they're shooting those little 10, 12 footers and making, or making the long ones too, then. Well, know. we know him pretty well. Yeah, that guy's, that guy's, he just, he just likes to. <laughs> slow mo. <laughs> yeah, yeah slow mo okay. was uh, yeah. putting in some slow-mo. work against the Spurs last night. Um, so Memphis wins this game 133 to 102. I believe it's the uh, worst loss that San Antonio has had this season, Ugh. with the exception of the uh, Jazz game, which was also a, a game earlier this year. Where that wasn't Antonio their out to lunch game. Did not, uh, that wasn't their out to lunch <laughs> It was game, a Houston no. game where they were out yeah, to lunch. There was that and then one. Then they too. lost to the Jazz. I don't know where they were last night, but out to dinner? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, something happened because I and I wonder if it's just the fact that, you know, like you mentioned, David, when they're not hitting these outside shots, they will not go inside. I mean, LaMarcus Aldridge is just uh, sort of resigned to staying out in the perimeter. The only guy who really takes it in with any sort of uh, confidence right now is uh, Keldon Johnson. He had 25 points, 10 rebounds. He was sort of the only sort of uh, silver lining what? for that game yesterday. And uh, they need to figure this out quick because Memphis is one of the better teams in the West. And uh, San Antonio has got to do something here. What gets me yelling at the TV is when a guy will hit a couple of threes and then he'll keep shooting them and keep missing them. He'll, he'll make two and then he'll miss and then he'll miss. And, and, but, he, but he do something different. And we had that discussion before. You know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you get the same result. Mm-hmm. It's not working it's out too well. That's usually not good. <laughs> usually not good. <laughs> All right. Well, see, look, that, that's the only guy that would do that. Look at that. A that's, lot of negativity. Like he's making a, a face stud. earlier. Any well, sense of optimism a... here, guys? Well, well, let's go a little more negative first. They oh, went boy. from fourth place in the West after they beat Denver. Remember that? Yeah. I got a screenshot of it on my like, phone just so I can show it every now and then. I can look at that and go, wow, remember when they were actually <laughs> fourth in the West? They went from fourth, lost two to Memphis, and now they're tenth. That's yeah. how tight the West is. So, you know, I mean, you know, you lose yeah, a game, it's gonna you're be out, a, you win a game, you're back in. Yeah, so. it's going to be a roller coaster for sure. And uh, I think, obviously, look, the, the guys were disappointed about the effort. Here's what DeMar and Coach Pop had to say afterward. We couldn't get stopped to get out of transition. Um, you know, I felt like we, we was pressing a little bit here and there, trying to figure it out, trying to get a bucket, trying, trying, trying to make something happen. And, you know, it just wasn't – it just wasn't – our night, both both nights. It had nothing to do with we didn't shoot well or we did this or we did that. Uh, they kicked our butts, and we did not play the basketball we've been playing. You know, I hate to disagree with Pop. But, I mean, if you don't shoot it well, isn't that the object? You're supposed to shoot it well. You're supposed to make it and keep the other team from making it. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? I think that's yeah. Cool. We make ours. They miss theirs. I, but I don't know. Okay. He's, uh, he's, he's won five games. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's yet, true. So. Uh, going back to what Max was saying, I guess uh, some sense of optimism. We now have uh, at least a couple of games Derek White has under his belt. Yeah, um, I good. Look, I, I'm not an expert here. I'm just going to say that <laughs> I think that expert. Derek should be starting at this point. Uh, I don't like what I'm seeing out of Lonnie Walker. No. I, he's too inconsistent for me. I think Ooh. now is the time to get Derek back in the starting line. Stepping out with a critique. <laughs> David, what do you got? All right. You okay there? I'm good. Yeah, okay I'm there. good. I, I, I kind of I agree <laughs> well, with, okay. uh, with, with RJ. Yeah. Okay, you wanted positive. Here's, here's the positive. All right, so let me look at this schedule. They play Minnesota on Wednesday. <laughs> That's a good thing. Then w. they get two days off. All right. Okay. And then on Saturday, they travel to Houston. W. And then they get Sunday off. And then here's the bad part. Monday, Tuesday, it's Golden State back to back. But, but they're here. W's. <laughs> Golden State's overrated. They're here. This is four like in a row. Automatic. Let's go. Okay. Automatic right. wins. They're here. And yeah. then they get like several days off. They play Tuesday and then they don't play again until Friday, but they start their rodeo road trip. Yeah, on, that's on that going to be a tough stretch. So, so kind of so take care of business so, here. This is good. Memphis. This every other I mean, day thing is going to kind of come yeah. to a to an end, and maybe they can get yeah. some rest and get some practice and, and work on making those shots. Cautious optimism. Also, can we establish Keldon Johnson? Uh, hidden gem of the NBA. Uh, what do I call him? The Mustang. The well, you call him the stud, stud, but yeah, stud. he's a, the he's a nickname stud. is the guy, Mustang. He's just, he's just great. Yeah, yeah he's just, he's without him, where would they be? He had 25 last <laughs> yeah. night. Where would they be without him? So he's uh, like the only guy that wants to drive it to the basket. Yeah. So, and he gets beat up every time he goes in there. But he's young. He can handle it. Yeah, that up and under was <laughs> But that's your, there's your positive right there. How about that guy? Yeah. Love it. So. Thank you, guys. Taking a look outside with live cam. Justin, Yeah. 54 degrees out there. 
It's warming up. Uh, feels a little bit better now that we're seeing those temperatures really trying to jump up quickly. A great news here in the pollen department too. Pollen count is in. Everything is low. I don't want to say mountain cedar season is over, but we're getting to that time of year. It's looking a lot better. It's low 30, even with some gusty winds as of late. Molds are also low. Elm is low. Always good in that department. Temperatures across the state 49 San Antonio 45 Waco 38 in Amarillo 47 Lubbock. It's a chilly start, but it'll be a really nice day across the entire Lone Star State. We're up around 68 for a high today. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Taking a look out at 410 and San Pedro. There's 410 and Parambital. Everything looks like it is smooth sailing out there. Beautiful Tuesday morning. If anything does pop up, we'll keep you posted. All right, Wall Street gearing up for what could be another rocky week of trading. Not so far, big pop this morning, but it is fueled by small investors on Reddit trying to drive up the price of GameStop stock, which is actually down about 50% this morning. In today's Consumer Watch, CNN's Mandy Gaither has the three things you should know about this GameStop saga. The so-called Reddit rebellion. While it's too soon to know how it will change the future of investing, experts are sure Wall Street will never be the same. I want to make more money and I feel confident it's going up. Here are three things we do know about the GameStop saga. Number one, it's a David versus Goliath story. In this case, it's a band of amateur day traders versus Wall Street pros known as short sellers. Number two, here's how it blew up. The popular Reddit message board called Wall Street Bets noticed GameStop was heavily shorted by hedge funds. And then an army of Reddit investors rushed to buy shares in high numbers, driving up the price. They're placing bets on a market in a way that they're actually affecting the odds of the outcome. One year ago, a single GameStop share cost about $4. It's now about $150. Short sellers were forced to buy shares to cover their losing bids, which sent the price of shares soaring even higher. Number three, the Robinhood backlash on Thursday. Robinhood, the free trading app, suspended trading of GameStop and other red-hot stock shares, citing extreme volatility. We're in a historic situation where there's a lot of activity and a lot of buying concentrated in a relatively small number of symbols. But some accused the app of caving to pressure from powerful institutions on Wall Street. The next day, Robinhood resumed limited buys on the stocks. Most experts say GameStop isn't able to support such sky high prices, and at some point, the bubble will burst. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. All right, well, time now is 9.39, 54 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at 9 a.m. Animals and humans alike enjoy having their fun in the snow. A look at those stories next in today's Look at This. And before we head to break, this is the scene in Florida. Reports multiple FBI agents shot while trying to serve a warrant. We have learned that one person has died. We don't know if it is one of the agents, if it is a suspect. We are still waiting for the latest information. But as you can see right there, it looks like uh, ambulance and police escort driving down the road. Again, that is in Florida. Once we get more information, we will keep you posted. We're gonna have an updating article on KSAT.com throughout the morning. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATdeals.com. This item is already one of our most popular, a new one-year Sam's Club membership. This yearly membership is typically $45, but not today. It's only $28.88. And you get this for free, the Sam's Club Seasoned Rotisserie Chicken and the Eight Count Gourmet Cupcakes. Now, there are some important details and steps that you'll need to follow. After your KSAT Deals purchase, you'll get a confirmation email to redeem your purchase. Use the link to finalize your membership enter your information and activate your membership watch for your confirmation email and once you've done this you can pick up your membership card at the nearest sam's club now be sure to read the email confirmation and sign up now to start saving lots of money the case at deals price on this 2888 head over to caseatdeals.com for this one and many more Well, some furry animals enjoying the snow and wintry weather conditions at one college means war. That's right. CNN's Jeremy Roth has those stories and more in today's Take a Look at This. 
The owners of this fluffy fur made a statement of their own, rolling, sliding, and tumbling around on some snowy slopes at DC's Smithsonian National Zoo. A family of giant pandas frolicked in the fluffy white stuff, and they weren't the only ones. Animals all over the park enjoyed the chilly precipitation, and the zoo shared some fantastic and flurry-filled photos online. Snow retreat, snow surrender was likely the battle cry as hundreds at Virginia Tech waged winter war in a massive annual snowball fight. Roughly six inches of snow coated the Blacksburg campus, and it was cadets versus civilians in the struggle for snowy supremacy. No word on who officially emerged victorious, but I'd say the real winners were those of us watching from home, safe, dry, and warm. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Getting hit in the face with a snowball? Oh my gosh. Okay, did you ever live anywhere with snow? No, but I've been, okay. uh, I have had a snowball fight before. With what snow? It one time snowed in Corpus Christi in the mm. winter of, I think, 2004. Okay. We had like a lot of snow that year and we, my brothers and I had a snowball fight. Nice, all right, Justin, no chance of snow here <laughs> in San Antonio? No, Okay. one good. snowball fight. Corpus did you win? 2004. Yeah. Oh, well that's good. That's good. Yeah, no, no chance of snow here. I, I would assume the students over at UTSA would love to have a snowball fight, but it's not in the cards, at least not uh, not next couple of weeks. Uh, take a look at the sunrise. Beautiful shot. The, the, let's go out to a little prior here. This is where the shot was taken. Sun on the horizon, a couple thin high cirrus clouds up there. It was a really, really nice start. Great morning. And uh, we mentioned uh, the mountain cedar. We're down at 30 today. I really think this is good news. As we look at the graph here, we typically see things fall off pretty rapidly once we get into February. We kind of say uh, Valentine's Day is the unofficial end to cedar season. I think we're getting there pretty quickly. I, I think that uh, cedar season is probably winding down, and we all love to hear that the way it has been going. Uh, lows this morning, we did get down below freezing in Kerrville, 31 degrees there, 32 Fredericksburg, 32 in Pleasanton. There's another spot that got down to freezing, not here in San Antonio. 39 was the low this morning to start. We've got clear skies right now, 49 at the airport, a very light wind. We're not expecting gusty winds today. Uh, cloud cover, not there here across Bear County. We did see a few thin high clouds work across the sky a little bit earlier, but they're moving along. 50 at Port SA, 53 Castroville, 50 right now, burning stage, 47 in Hondo. These numbers are coming up pretty quickly. 50 Rock Springs, in fact, it's 50 Carrizo Springs, U Valley Rock Springs, and Del Rio. All very uniform out to the west. Dew points are low. We've got very dry air in place. This puts us in the very dry uh, air category. Uh, and as we zoom out, so most of Texas is in the same position here. But what we're going to do is go forward in time here. So we'll fast forward to Thursday and notice the humidity comes right back in. We'll get dew points close to 60 by Thursday morning. And once moisture starts to come back into South Texas, that typically leads to a little bit of fog. And so we may see some of that next couple of mornings, uh, especially Thursday morning. I think we could see some patchy fog here and there. Satellite picture shows we do have some clouds trying to work through, but nothing that's bringing us any rain. The high pressure in the upper levels still in control for now. We're watching this storm system out west. This is the one that will be moving towards the middle part of the country and dragging a front through Thursday night into Friday cools us down, but it doesn't bring us any rain. Other big storm system is up across the northeast. Still some heavy snow there, uh, but it is starting to wind down. This was a storm system that is, has really been sitting here and dumping just incredible amounts of snow. It is finally going to move away today. Forecast for us, again, just a couple clouds the next few days. We may get some fog Thursday morning. Then here comes our front. This is Thursday afternoon. I think we're still warm. Temperatures are going to be really warm. Uh, late in the day on Thursday. I think we could get, a, could get up close to 80. And then front comes through. No rain with this, but it does cool us down Friday. And we may get some gusty winds out of it. Forecast for today is up uh, up around 68 this afternoon. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tonight we're down to 45. 73 on your Wednesday. 80 on Thursday. Front comes through mid-60s on Friday. We rebound a little bit on Saturday, but another front comes through. And that cools us back down into the 50s on Sunday maybe a bit more cloud cover on Monday. But rain chance is still missing from that forecast, and we need to get some rain soon. So hopefully down the line, something will change, guys. All right, thank you so much, Justin. Well, just into our newsroom, we are learning two FBI agents have died in that shooting in South Florida. Right now, we know several FBI agents were shot while serving a warrant. We're still waiting for more information. And just stay with us here and online, KZ.com, to keep you updated. We'll be right back.
Good morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, David Duchovny talks about his new book. Plus, foods that boost your mood for Winter Wellness Week. We'll see you soon on live. Every two seconds, someone in the United States needs blood to help fill out the need. Our KSAC community partner, University Health, hosting a blood drive this month. It is February 18th and 19th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Woody Museum right on Broadway. If you want to participate, you do need to make an appointment. You can do so by calling 210-358-2812 or visiting DonateBloodToday.com. We have all this information. Just head to KSACCommunity.com. We're taking a look outside with your traffic authority there. Looks like there's some kind of accident or something at 410 and San Pedro Avenue. You can see EMS is there with officers on scene. If you're in the area, you might want to avoid it. Also, I-35 and heading northbound at Loop 410. Major backup there. We don't really know the reason why, but if you're going to be in that area, just make sure you plan enough time for your trip. And right now, temperatures are in the mid 50s. We'll make it into the upper 60s this afternoon. Sunny skies, uh, beautiful tomorrow, too. Maybe some fog to start on Thursday. A little bit of a cool down Friday weekend. Same story, warm on Saturday, a little cooler Sunday. But all in all, pretty nice forecast, guys. All right, Justin, thank you so much. Beautiful day to be outside. And we are now in February. There's so much to look forward to. We got a full list, 10 things that you can look forward to in San Antonio. Sarah, start us off. I'm just so happy it's finally February. All right, well, the rodeo, it's not going to look the same, and chances are you might not have a ticket. But the fact that the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is happening is all great news for many, with more than 21,200 students benefiting from these scholarships that the San Antonio Rodeo gives out. I do love that story. We've done so many stories with local districts. Justin? What else we got? Let's see here. Uh, what are we looking forward to? Uh, trout fishing? <laughs> okay, there you, there you go. You seem excited yes. about it. No, actually, I do love it. It's a great program. Uh, the Texas Parks and Wildlife will continue stocking rainbow trout at four San Antonio area lakes. If you've ever seen it, it's pretty cool to watch them do it. They stock the lake and you can go out fishing. Perfect to do. All right, and Bud Light Riverwalk Virtual 5K. Pretty cool because not only can you run or walk at your own convenience, you're also supporting a really good cause. Sarah? I'm really looking forward to Valentine's Day. Valentine's oh. Day and Galentine's Day are on this list. You know, it's, a, I just, it's not really about spending money to me. I think it's like making mm -hmm. the homemade cards. Maybe I'll make uh, everyone at Case at a homemade card. I don't know. I just Aww. love Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right, can you explain awesome. to people what Valentine's Day is? It's a, it's a, it's for the ladies. It started with Parks and Rec, but. I mean, I think I've been celebrating Valentine's Day for a really long time with all my girlfriends. You know, we send each other cards. Maybe you can do like a virtual like wine night with them. It's just to show your girlfriends that, hey, I love you. All right, for the rest of us, we have Valentine's Day. Before I let you guys go, 15 seconds. Justin, any good Valentine's Day plans? Ooh, uh, I'm working on it. Okay. You, like, you make your daughters their Valentine's boxes. All right, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you at News at Noon.